do, and it's felt beyond the campus. Our church members are very passionate. They don't want to just limit themselves to the church. They want to do something outside the church, and they bring more souls into the church. This college has helped me in spiritual by involving me into activities as AYs and visiting people, going to like orphanages and praying for them and bringing them uh, and bringing them the knowledge about Christ. More than 650 people crowd into this space on Sabbath. Apart from being too small for all students to come together for worship, this old building is gradually deteriorating and posing risks to the students. When it's summer it gets too hot where our equipments fail to function sometimes and we have students who faint and our air conditioning systems and fan systems are not good enough because of the roof that we have, the tin roof that we have. And not just the heat, when it rains, it leaks, uh, damages our furniture, and we have uh, mold and fungus growing around. So it is our prayer that we would like to have a dedicated church that will help our children to learn and to study the Word of God, sing praises. They'll be drawn closer to the foot of the cross. And it is our desire so that that church becomes a big blessing on this campus. Please pray for the students and faculty at Lowry Adventist College. This quarter, a portion of your 13th Sabbath offering will help build them a new church on campus. Thank you for giving generously to provide them with this much needed facility. God has blessed us immensely. Uh, to live in this country and to uh, have a fair amount of affluence and God has given us an opportunity uh, to give to our brothers and sisters who are doing a good work in India. So I hope the Lord touches your heart this morning and you give cheerfully and as much as you can for this project in India. And it's, besides, it's, it's there are several projects in India that are supported by this offering, um, but this is just one of them. So uh, may you be blessed as you give this morning. The deacons will collect the offering. For our closing, um, on page 75. Okay, let's stand please.
pray. Father in heaven, we are amazed at your love, the wonder of it all, that you love us even though we are sinners. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for this Sabbath day, and we thank you for giving us the ability to support the work around the world, and ask that you bless our offering and that it'll be used in a mighty way in the country of India. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated.
everyone. Feliz sábado. <laughs> why, do we, why are we saying in English and Spanish? Because in our class, we actually study in English and Spanish. <laughs> My name is Karen. I'm the youth Sabbath school teacher this year. And praise God, we have such a vibrant group of young people who love the word of God. What, do we, what does the church say? Amen, right? Uh, we don't have to pull, tug them to come to church. They just want to study the Word of God. Um, our prayer starting out the year was, Lord, what would you have us study? What would you have us do in this class? And when the question was presented to the youth, the, the response was, Karen, we just want to go straight from the Word of God. We just want to study the Word of God every day, and we want to be able to understand it for ourselves deeply. And, you know, that kind of desire can only come from the Holy Spirit. That kind of desire, that hungering for the Word of God can only come from God. And so we want to thank God and continue to pray for our youth. Um, I, would, I asked a couple of the ladies to share with us a testimony of how their time in the class has um, impacted them. Our theme this year is, Give Me the Bible. Give me the Bible. And thank God, that's been a joy to study together, deep discussions in the Word, and they're going to share with us their testimonies, how they've been impacted by the Word of God, and also we're going to give you guys a little challenge, so sit tight and listen. Okay. <laughs> So as Karen mentioned, we've been studying um, straight from the Bible, which I've always wanted to do because I don't like our lesson plans because they're a little disorganized. But one of the reasons I wanted to do it is because I think there's so much power in the book, the Bible itself. And one of the things that I've been learning is the character of God, which I feel like is something that we often don't talk about. And I see right now we are going chapter by chapter, starting from Genesis. Right now we're in Exodus. One of the things that I've been noticing is the character of God, like his patience, his way of working with his people, um, more so like how he makes covenants, how it takes time to fulfill them, learning to wait, all these things that can be, even though there was like a really long time ago, they can still be applied to my life right now and today. Um, and I love how it's so applicable, not just in one area, even though the area or the situation isn't the same as we're reading. It's always very applicable to the situations in my life. And that's something that's been a really big blessing to me. Um, <clears throat> hello, happy Sabbath. Um, so my testimony, because right now we're reading the um, book of Exodus. And um, we just finished um, the Israelites um, in their exodus from Egypt. The Israelites from their exodus are from Egypt. And the whole thing I'm really getting about the exodus of the Israelites is God to show the Egyptians that he is God and he's the true God. And um, he is a very jealous God and he um, will always favor his people. And this is um, truly shown in um, Exodus 20 when he's giving the Ten Commandments where he, um, in verse 4 it says, I am the Lord your God. I'm a jealous God visiting the iniquity of of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. And um, I'm just really loving, loving reading the Bible and just learning about how God, he, he, he's amazing and he just loves us so much and he will always show us mercy even if when we fall short, we're never, we can always come back to him and ask for mercy and continue our relationship with him. So our, our question today, the question that I'll propose comes from the story of Daniel. We haven't gotten there, but it's something um, me and the girls when we went to GYC is what we were studying. And I wanted to propose it today because I think it's so powerful. Um, I remember one of our preachers had asked us this question. So um, they were talking about King Nebuchadnezzar and how, like I was saying, like the Bible is so applicable to so many different areas. 
So he, he was saying how we will have our King Nebuchadnezzars and we'll have our own furnaces. Maybe your King Nebuchadnezzar is learning to forgive or letting go of jealousy, envy, or revenge, right? And then with those things, like you have to learn to stand up and to stand to God. If you're feeling those things and God is telling you, this isn't the way that I want my child to live, right? You will have that feeling furnace where you feel like, no, I don't, like it has to be my way, I wanna do it this way, right? But God is asking you to stand on what he tells you to do because he stands with you, right? So my question for today is, when you have your fire furnace, will you allow, allow it to continue to, will you allow it to continue or to make a stand with God? What are your fire furnace? And that is my question for today. So during this time, I like to invite you guys to turn to your neighbors, talk about a fire furnace that you want to let go or you want to start bringing before God. Or what do you plan to do about it? And if you don't have a plan, I highly encourage taking it before God and just praying about it and just ask him to help you let it go. So you guys heard the challenge, right? What is your fiery furnace? And who are the King Nebuchadnezzars in your life that you're afraid to stand up to? Um, and. As Joy mentioned, if we can, just take a moment. We have a few minutes left uh, where we can actually talk with our neighbor. So we would like to ask you to go ahead and turn to someone right now um, and have a discussion. What are some fiery furnaces that you have? Uh, what, are some, what are some King Nebuchadnezzars that you perhaps, God is calling you to stand up to? Stand firm by the word of God. So let's have a mini discussion and at the end we'll close out with a word of prayer. Okay, find a partner, all right? <laughs> Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Almighty God, thank you for the opportunity for us to just pause on your holy day. Happy Sabbath day, Jesus. Thank you that we could pause and just discuss your word, to talk about the fiery furnaces. Even though we read about them, about the Hebrew boys, 
many years ago, we realized there are still fiery furnaces today. We realize that you're still calling us to stand against the idols of today. And we realize, God, that just as you were that fourth member in the fiery furnace, you are still right there fighting with us, and you are winning the victory for us and protecting us. So, Lord, when you call us to stand, help us to not see the fire, but to see the Jesus who will see us through the fire. When, we stand, when you call us to stand, help us to not see the height of the idols, but help us to see that the God of heaven and earth is seated on his throne, and he will deliver us. And Lord God, we cannot lean on our own understanding, our own strength, but Lord, may we have the courage to lean on you because you have never failed. You have a 100% track record. So Lord, thank you that we can trust you, we can lean on you, and thank you that you're choosing this time to prepare us to stand, that we may be able to stand at your coming. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to everybody that's come to church this morning and to thank God for his blessings and to praise him. Um, first, we're going to uh, announce, hopefully, a winner for uh, answering the question, uh, the kids' trivia. And the question was, who was given the coat with many colors? You know that, John? Who was given the coat with many colors? Joseph. Joseph. And I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Peters to pull one of these tickets. Just pull one. Pull one. And the winner is 
Diego Gonzalez, is Diego here this morning? Where's Diego? He's coming. All right. Diego had the correct answer, and we're glad that you're participating in the kids' trivia program. And I believe our brother Dow has an announcement that he would like to make. Come on up, Dow. Uh, thank you, Doug. Uh, yeah, happy Sabbath, everyone. And it's a glorious Sabbath out there. And I'm very excited to announce three things from the men's ministry, all of them related to that. And one of them I want to thank is for the clothing drive for this month that you've done. And uh, Sister Selma, our former member, distributes those into the community out there in the south uh, land here in San Jose area. I believe she does that ministry and stuff. So great, thank you. The second thing I want to announce is uh, very excited. Uh, we're going to have a luncheon and it actually is for the men, but it is a luncheon and it's on April 7th, Sunday, April 7th from 12 to 2 p.m. And it's at the, um, the pizza parlor there, the straw hat on industrial. And I do have flyers up. Um, on the foyer there and in the, in the hallway there with my name and my contact if you want to know more details about it and stuff. Uh, the main thing about that one is, is that I'm trying to get men to come and to hear more about the ultimate uh, retreat for men. Uh, so if you want to kick your men out there, ladies, <laughs> for the weekend, uh, send them to the Northern California uh, Christian Men's Retreat, okay, at Leona Meadows. Uh, God is good. We have uh, Ru Dr. Rudy Peters, who is the NCC men's coordinator and other ministries, but Doug will announce those as well for other ministries he's into as well. Uh, so those are two things that I want to announce, and I think it's up in there as well that you can read for the NCC. I think it's 220 uh, for double per person, if you want a double room, or 290 uh, but don't worry about the cost, because what's going to happen is uh, I've asked all of you here, <laughs> thank you, uh, to donate for the month of March and April, right, into the account. And based upon that, I'll come up with an allocation for the men who do go to reimburse at least 100 maybe $150 back. So you don't have to worry about money at all, right? Awesome. Awesome, for sure, Dr. Rudy Peters. Thank you. It worked out well for us. <laughs> You want to say a word? Okay, yeah, he does, probably. Go ahead, Dr. Peters. Okay. I am so excited to be here with you as the men's ministries director of the Northern California Conference. Just want to say to the men, we have a treat in store for you um, at Leone Meadows in the month of May. Uh, we're bringing in Dr. Myron Edmonds and just an amazing, gifted young man who is pouring into the lives of men. You don't want to miss it. We don't want funds to be an issue, so talk to your director. If you're challenged in any way financially, we will make it happen. We want to see you at Leone Meadows so that we can fellowship. We are trying to build an unstoppable army of godly men in Northern California Conference. Amen. God bless you. All right, brother. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, brother. And uh, now Sandra has an announcement. Good morning and happy Sabbath. As clerk, I have the pleasure of calling for the vote to accept our sister, Georgetta Armulescu, uh, as a member of not only the Hayward, but the Worldwide Church of Seventh-day Adventist Christians. Um, Georgetta tells me that she sought and accepted the Sabbath truth back in 2018. And I know that every one of you has been greeted by this industrious, devoted 
Christian woman when you walk through the doors of the church. And so um, at this time, is there a motion to accept her? I see many hands. <laughs> okay. Uh, is there a second? <laughs> I have to do this by pr procedure. <laughs> All in favor of accepting her requests on profession of faith? Any um, one objecting? <laughs> Seeing none. The, oh, this little girl, I don't think she realizes what she's doing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, based on the unanimous vote, minus one, uh, we accept you and we welcome you into Thank you. the church. Thank you, Thank you Georgetta. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. I'm Georgetta. Congratulations. Welcome to the Thank family. Uh, we don't have your certificate today because our pastor's on sabbatical, but okay. we'll be getting that to you. So the okay. next best thing is a church directory. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank is there anything you you'd like to say? Thank you very much. Okay. God bless. Thank you. And now we'll have uh, Karen do our praise singing. Is Karen here? Okay, church family, we'll begin our praise singing. Um, we'll first turn to page 88, I Sing the Mighty Power of God. Page 88. Until then, 632.
song will be number 604, 604. We know not the hour. Shall we all stand, please? Please keep standing for our opening prayer. Please bow your heads and close your eyes for prayer. Dear God, thank you for your holy day. Thank you for bringing us all together in this big community of your home. Please bless the pastor as he preaches. In Jesus' name, amen. Please, uh, it's time for children's story. Yeah, so all the children, please come forward and uh, collect the offering for uh, Bayside School. And our brother, uh, Elder George Edwards, is going to give the story this morning.
Good morning. Good morning, everybody okay? Morning. Morning, 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 morning. How are you doing? You have spring break already? Anybody have spring break? Spring break start? Some might have yesterday, my own start from yesterday. And they're gonna continue for the next week. Okay? Now I wanna tell you a little story. A very important. Listen to it. Sound a bit funny, but the message is important. This is important, right? You know, we all have challenges daily in our lives, and we ought to put it to Jesus Christ, okay? Um, listen to this story. There's an old gentleman. He was walking, walking in a, a sort of a lonely area, country area, and um, he had this big backpack on him, and he was walking, you know, the backpack, weighed him down, heavy, and he's going, and um, not much transportation to help him. But lo and behold, you know, God always provides something. And uh, a truck was coming, and the truck, they stopped and said, come in. And lo and behold, he went into the truck, and he sit down. But you know what's strange when the drivers of the truck, they noticed he still had his heavy backpack on him. It looked funny, huh? Crazy, stupid. But you know what? We sometimes do that too. We sometimes get help and we still get a backpack on us. Let me give an example. Jesus tells us to bring all, all our problems and trials to him. Do we do that? Do we bring everything to him? All right, yes, we don't do everything to him. You kids, let me give you an example. Your birthday, grandma give you, say, $500. What would you do? Do you pray to him and ask him, what should I do with it? You know, you wouldn't do that. You say, look, I got to get it. I got to get, yes. Anybody? What would you say? You want to say something? Yes. Yeah, sure. What would you say? Yeah. Invest it. You inv yeah. But, but, right. You would invest it. But, but. Do we not come to Jesus first? We don't do that. We do our own thing, right? Now, uh, another thing with you, um, you go to school. Now, you're doing your subjects, and you're having a D or F in your math. You're getting a B or B plus in your English. Now, do you, you, you would pray for which one? You might just pray to God to ask you to help you with the math that you're getting D and F. But you would not pray to for the English you're getting a B. You should pray for both. So you hold back that one. Pray to get an A or an A plus. We as adults sometimes do that also. Well, we pray to God and ask him if we are sick. Yeah, we're struggling. We lost our job. But let us get a promotion or we get a bonus or something with the money. We don't pray to him, ask him what we do. We try and say, look, I got this money now. My neighbor extended the house. I got to extend my house. I want to buy this ferry car. We do that. So sometimes we all do that. We pray to God. We pick and choose what we want to pray to him for. But God doesn't want us to do that. Like that old guy, right? He helped him. And he said, well, Lord, he was in the van, the truck. And he still had that heavy backpack. He still had some weight in him. God wants us to cast all in Peter. First Peter 5, 10, he said, cast all our cares to him. Bring all our bodies to him. And so, a little message from us here today that you must bring everything to God. Don't hold back anything. Okay? And he's going to take care of us because he knows. One of the problems we have when we hold back something, we go on our own, sign a contract, and when it backfires on us, then the problem now, then we come to him. It could save us a lot of problems if from the start we had give it to Jesus. So as your boys and girls, pray to Jesus. Bring everything to him. Even when you get a little extra money from grandma or grandpa, pray and ask him, God, my father, what should I do with this money? Okay? All right. So who want to pray for us here today?
Well, good, my friend, always dear. Dear God, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Take care of us every day, and while we go back to our seats, be with us every day and protect us from anything that's going to happen in the future. That's bad. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, anybody else? One more. One more? My friend here. Thank you, Lord. Would you play for us? See, Bubu is, go, is in church. We have to share his prayer. Amen. Amen, yeah. So bring all your problems. Don't hold back any, and God going to see us through. Okay. All right, there's something for you as you go back to your seat. It uh, warms my heart to see all of you here, and I know it warms God's heart to see you here. But we know some brothers and sisters who aren't here today for one reason or another. We also know some brothers and sisters who stopped coming during COVID and haven't returned. And we all know people, friends, that don't know Jesus. And so I'd like to lift them up this morning. But I also want you to know that at prayer meeting, that's the focus of our prayer. We have a book. Uh, I call it the book of life on earth. Because in it we list the brothers and sisters we miss. And we list the friends that we know that don't know Jesus. So if God puts that burden on your heart, this morning and maybe every morning and maybe even on a prayer meeting night Wednesday night pray for those people as far as you can let's kneel and pray Father in heaven, we thank you for bringing us to church this morning. We thank you that you put in our heart a desire to come and to thank you and to worship you and to praise you and to be with our brothers and sisters. Father, you're a wonderful God. You bless us in so many ways. You watch over and protect us. We are grateful to you. And we lift your, your name up this morning. And Father, you're gracious in your forgiveness of our sins because we're, we're all sinners. We all stumble. Father, we commune with you daily, but yet we continue to falter and come short of your glory. But we know that you have forgiveness in your heart for us, and we ask for that this morning. Father, we want to lift up uh, Dr. Saw's family as they continue to grieve his passing. And we ask that you would just give them peace and comfort them and 
Remind them that they'll be with Dr. Saw again soon when your son comes. Father, we want to lift up our Bayside School and pray that you will continue to find and bring more students to our school. We ask that you bless in a special way the parents who are bringing their children now. And we ask a special blessing on the Bayside School staff. And Father, we place that precious little school in your hands. And Father, this morning we want to lift up our brothers and sisters who for one reason or another not here this morning. Or maybe they haven't been here for a while. Father, you know who they are. And we also have friends and relatives, family members that either don't know Jesus or not close to Jesus. Father, we want to lift up all those people this morning. We want the Holy Spirit to speak to their heart. We want the Holy Spirit to bring them to Jesus and to bring them back to church. Father, we place them in your hands. And if there is something that we can do to encourage a friend or a family or a brother and sister in Christ, please give us that wisdom and give us those words. Father, again, we thank you for your mercy and your love. Pray that you'll be with Dr. Peters this morning as he gives us a bread of life. May you anoint him and bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9 and 11. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another just as you also are doing. Praise the Lord. I'd like to introduce our speaker, uh, Dr. Rudy Peters. Um, he hails from St. Vincent in the Caribbean. And I'm not sure why he left that beautiful island, but he did. He answered God's call and went to New York City and, be, and was pastoring there. Then he came to California and did some pastoring work here. And now you can tell he's a servant of God because he has four jobs. He's an African-American ministries coordinator. He's urban ministries director. He's men's ministry coordinator. And he's prison ministries coordinator. So um, the conference is getting their money's worth from Dr. Peters. And he's uh, happily married, 31 years, two children, and he now hails from the great city of Stockton. We're glad you're here, Dr. Peters.
his aboard to come to rescue a sinner like you, a sinner like me. Adam, thank you so much. You're amazing. <laughs> that kid has such control of his voice. I think I'm going to take him on the road with me to sing. <laughs> Amazing. Told that story so beautifully. And it's the reason why we're here today. That Jesus rescued us. It is the good news. It's what wakes us up in the morning. What allows us to walk with our backs up because we have hope. Jesus died for us. I am so happy to be here um, at the Hayward SDA Church. I want to first of all thank your pastor, my friend, Dr. Kraft. Um, he's away getting some needed rest having had to deal with a lot of stuff over the last few years. And so I'm really grateful. And when he called and asked, I said, my friend, 
I will be honored to come and spend time with your community. I want to thank your head elder, um, Elder Kevin, for reaching out, connecting, and making me feel so at home. I, 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 love, I love your community. I want to thank Elder Abbott for his kind words of introduction. And yes, I do wear several hats at the conference office, and I bring you greetings from your conference office, where your president is Dr. Mark Woodson, your executive secretary is Jose Marin, and your amazing treasurer is Elder John Rasmussen. We strive to provide all of our churches and pastors and schools with the resources they need to connect people to the abundant life in Christ and get them ready for a soon return. Because at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, we are just pilgrims passing through. The song says, this world is not my home. We're only passing through. And so I don't, I, I don't know about you, but sometimes I get homesick for heaven. Sometimes my heart is restless because I am longing to be with him. So I pray that as we continue to spend time together, we will continue to sense the presence of God and hear the word of God and what he wants to say to us today. For the next few moments, I want to talk to you on the subject in celebration of God's gift of salvation. In celebration of God's gift of salvation. And our scripture reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, verses 9 through 11. And I want to read it again in your hearing because I believe that when the word of God is read, there is power that goes along with it. The Bible says, For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. God, in the stillness of this moment, speak again to our hearts. May we be careful to listen and obey, for we ask it in Jesus' name, amen and amen. The story is told of a little boy. His dad was very proud of him and his ability to get up in front of the congregation and recite Bible text. It was a special Sabbath service, and so they asked him if he will memorize and recite Matthew chapter 28, verse 6, that says he is not here, he is risen. Now the little boy said, well, that, that's just easy. I, I, I'm accustomed to memorizing longer passages, and so this is a piece of cake. And so when the Sabbath morning came for the little boy to recite the text, he got up and he grabbed hold of that mic and he opened his mouth, but words won't come out. He was frozen. 
And, 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 and that was strange because uh, he, was, he was accustomed to, to, to doing those kinds of things. And the preacher wanting to help leaned over to him and whispered in his ear and it seemed as though he remembered. And this time he grabbed a hold of the mic again and with a smile on his face, he said, he is not here, he is in prison. <laughs> you see, man, man, many people know the story of Jesus risen from the dead, but they have not experienced the power that comes from a risen Savior. A lot of folks are still living in the prison of sin not knowing God has given them freedom, and so they are not experiencing the abundance that comes from knowing him. I'm here to declare to you on today, he is not in prison, he is risen. <laughs> he is not in prison, he is risen. I want to share with you two ideas that I hope will encourage you today as we celebrate this Easter season when the world, we are celebrating the greatest gift to humanity. As the song said, he, he left his abode, he, he left the splendor of heaven, came to our world to live with us, to be in community with us so that he can make a way for us to get out of the mess that we found ourselves in so that we can be restored back to him. I want to declare to you on today, this whole season, this coming of Christ into the world, that you and I must know that in Christ, our destiny has been reversed. In Christ, our destiny has been reversed. You see, when God created mankind, he so desired to have a human family that he created us in his image after his likeness, breathe into us the breath of life. We became living souls and he wanted to dwell with us. He wanted folks that he can love on and that he can relate to, that he can be in community with. But you know the story. Adam and Eve wanted to do things their own way. They wanted to go, uh, they wanted to live life on their own terms. And so through Adam and Eve's sin, wrath came upon us. Humanity was doomed. Because the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. Third, it tells us in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, Romans 5, 12. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. We, we found ourselves in a predicament that we could not have escaped from. Adam brought wrath upon us, doom upon us. But I'm happy to declare, according to the text, that through Christ's righteousness, humanity is now destined for salvation. So through Adam's sin, humanity was destined to wrath. But through Jesus' righteousness, Humanity is destined for salvation. 
Here's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verses 18 through 19. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. You see, brothers and sisters today, there is good, there is, this is the good news of salvation. That God, through Christ, has broken the spell that sin imposed upon us. The good news of this season is that God has set us free. He has broken the bond of sin and has brought us back into the family of God. He has made the way plain so that you and I can come back home. See, I don't know about you, but, but, but there's something about going home. Uh, uh, I, I love to travel. I really do. I love to travel. But after a while, you want to get home. Uh, there's something about home that beckons you. There, there, there's something about being in your own bed. There, there's something about eating your own food. Now, I, I'm here to tell you that, that, that if you are sensing a, a, a restlessness in your heart, if you are sensing uneasiness, it is because, it is because we, was not, we were not meant for this life. We were meant for something better. You see, home is in the presence of God in an unbroken relationship where we are living our lives in alignment with him. You see, we need to celebrate the fact that the death of Christ is powerful. See, sometimes we take for granted the power that is inherent in the death of Christ. You see, we, 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 we acknowledge the power that is in the sin of Adam. Because in Adam, we understand that death reigns on all. We understand that in Adam, wrath reigns on all. But we fail to see that in the righteousness of Christ, righteousness will reign on all. As long as we come to him and acknowledge him, then his righteousness becomes ours. And I don't stand in my own righteousness because I don't have any. Because you know what the Bible says about the righteousness you have? I stand not in my own righteousness because I don't have any. I stand in the righteousness of Christ. And when I am covered with the righteousness of Christ, I'm all right. Not because I said so, but because he makes me so. You see, Adam's sin was powerful, but Christ's righteousness is more powerful. We need to celebrate the fact that we have life. And we are to live that way. Some of us, we, 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 we live like we are defeated. We live as though this Christian journey, fallen God, it, it, it's, it's, it's a job that, that we don't like. You know, some of us, some of us we, we, we work because we have to. Uh, you've been going to that job, job for the last 50 years because you just had to. You don't like nobody there. You don't like the job, but you got to put food on the table. Some of us, when we, we wear our Christianity as though we're just enduring it. Friends, if, if, if we believe that God is who he says he is, if we believe that Jesus is who he says he is, we ought to always be smiling because there's something bubbling on the inside of us reminding us that we are not what we used to be, but thank God he's making us into something more. See, you, 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 you have to understand that there is power, there is real power in, 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 in this gospel. And so my first point was, in Christ, our destiny has been reversed. 
We are no longer children of wrath. We are no longer destined to wrath. Here's what the text says back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. We can obtain salvation through Jesus Christ. The song says, what? can wash away my sins, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me pure within, nothing but the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Power to make us talk right. Power to make us live right. Power to make us look right. Power to make us be right. We need to just tap into the power and let him do his work. There is power in the blood. Here's my second point, my final point. In Christ, our life has been preserved. In Christ, our life has been preserved. Because remember, the curse, the, the injunction was if you, if you eat, you will die. When you eat, you will die. We were doomed for eternal destruction. But when Christ showed up, ah, he, he preserved our life. Here's what the Bible says in John 10.10. 10. John 10.10. 10. The Bible says the thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. I, I, I love that. Not, not, not just life, but abundant life. We, 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 we have a special kind of life when we come to Jesus. Not just, we, we don't just live, we live abundantly. Because we got this gift from God. He says that he has come to give us abundant life. You see, you see, God's intent has always been to have a human family and dwell with us. God wants to dwell with us. See, understand, God has a human family, and he also has a celestial family. He has angels. You know, we talk about Michael, the archangels. He has Gabriel. He has angels. We can't see them. That's his family as well. But, but God's intent was for, he wanted to come and live with us. He wanted to dwell with us. That's why he kept telling the children of Israel, build me a sanctuary that I might dwell with you. Amen. See, the, 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 challenge, the challenge comes sometimes, sometimes, in spite of the fact that God wants to dwell with us, some of us, we don't want to hang out with him. We, we, we don't like to hang out with him okay, and because, you know, he will, he will question certain things that you're saying. And he might question certain things you're watching. Ah, you're getting quiet on me now. You're getting quiet on me. <laughs> so, so, you see, God wants to dwell with us. The question is, do you want to dwell with him? Uh, because understand, when we dwell with God, we, 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 we lock ourselves in with omnipotence. We lock ourselves in with sufficiency. And whatever we stand in need of, when we are locked into him, when we are dwelling with him, he makes it available. You see, in the Garden of Eden, humanity had a situation where loyalty was displaced. And because of this displaced loyalty, God's plan was complicated. So God had to resort to different means to try and get us back. Uh, he, he, is this, he is this amazing lover, this, this amazing God who loves us so much that he won't let us go. Think about it. God could have spoken our 
annihilation into existence. He could have simply said, be gone, and we would have been gone. But he loves us so much that he, he, he went through all kinds of contortion in the Old Testament just to win us back. And even now, even now, you, who, you, you, you're still, you're still, you're still playing in the river on the bank. And God is coming every day and talking to your heart every day. He's coming after you when you're still trying to do in the river on the bank. One day in the world, one day in the church, and God is saying, I love you so much, I'm not going to stop coming after you. Hear me now. When you are loyal to Christ, when you get to the place where you are sold out for him, he will never, he will never abandon you or cut you off. He loves you too much. He loves me too much to let me go. So, so, so when, 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 when God wanted to restore everything, he says, what will I do? What can I do? And that's when Jesus came to our world. And where Adam and Eve failed, he triumphed. Here's what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, 14 through 15. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who, is, who, who was, who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. This time, humanity did not fail the test. Jesus overcame. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all, fear, all fears are gone. Because I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. Brothers and sisters, we are in good hands. We are not in all state hands. We are in good hands. We are in the hands of God. And he's powerful. He's able to carry you. He's able to carry me. It doesn't matter how patchy my life might get. It doesn't matter how rocky my journey might be. If I am remaining confident in him, if I am remaining plugged in, he promises he will take me home safely. I know sometimes we want our lives to be going always on an upward trajectory. But if you've been living long enough, you know that life is more like a roller coaster. There are times when you're up, you're on top of the world with God. I mean, there is nothing you can do wrong. But there are times you find yourself so low, you wonder whose child you are. But I'm here to remind you that God loves you the same when you're on the high mountain, and he loves you the same when you're in the low valley. You are still his child. You just act in fun. You're still his child. You just act in the fool. You're still his child, and he will see you through. The joy we have is to encourage one another. Let's not tear each other down. When I miss the mark, don't tear me down. When you miss the mark, I shouldn't tear you down. Our job should be to lift each other up. Remind us of the hope. Remind us of the resurrection. And let us together, let us together strive with our eyes fixed on Jesus. Because I believe that 
soon and very soon. We will see him coming in the clouds of glory and death will be wrapped up. Death will be swallowed up and we will go home to live and reign with him in that land where there will be no more crying, no more pain, no more sickness, no more dying, but we get to live with him forever. May this be our experience as we journey together. May God bless you. Okay, church family, let's turn to page 159, the old rugged cross, and let's stand please. Last I lay down, I will be.
You may be seated. Sorry, thank you. Happy Sabbath. Good afternoon. Um, God is good. All the time. Amen. I love hearing that saying, and so I wanted to see if you guys knew it, but let's do it one more time. God is good. All the time. Amen. And we all say amen. <laughs> Um, I'd like to share something I learned this week. Um, Did you know that the Black Iron Gate in front of our Bayside School was run down by a car? And um, yeah, I'm not sure about the whole story. You can always talk to our uh, our elders or um, our our principal from the school. But I guess uh, when we got a quote to see how much that gate would cost, it would cost our church $7,000. And, you know, with those ups and downs um, uh, Dr. Peters was talking about, yes. So, you know, Bayside, we just reopened uh, the school, praise God. But, you know, things like this happen. And um, then I heard during our board meeting that a person who loved God and who has the skills to fix gates just, um, told us that he'd like to fix it for free. Praise God. And, um, yes, applause, yes. And, um, you know... We have a lot of people with great skills and talents in our community and in our church that is um, willing to share that with our church, and we're very blessed to have that. And uh, today's offering, our loose offering, will be going to the many ministries we have at our church that serves the women, the men, and the families. And especially during the summer when we have Vacation Bible School, it reaches out to our community. And so um, I'd like the the deacons uh, and deaconess to please stand and pray with me as we collect the tithes and offerings today. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your Sabbath day. Thank you for the sunshine, the rain that we've had, and we just ask that you be with the money that is um, going to be collected today to help further your word, and um, please bless it, and we thank you again for the opportunity to serve you this way in this ministries. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let us pray. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling 
to the great wise God, creator, redeemer, and the sustainer of our lives, be glory, power, and dominion, both now and forevermore, that all of God's children say, Amen and Amen.